you over time. Good afternoon. I'm Amy, Ollie, Chris, Pond, and Fiona. And this afternoon, we're going to talk to you about two very different companies who take very different business decisions. We're going to focus closely on the concept of corporate social responsibility and the impacts that have on the business. First, I'm going to introduce the SR to you. CSR has been defined as voluntary plan actions to improve social or ecological conditions. This basically means the businesses consider the impacts that they have on the environment or socially. So for them it's about considering the impact and trying to minimise them and accepting the cost of it. Here I've included a model which highlights the difference between business success and being ethical and how they can work together. And it's a decision businesses often take, but it's not always successful. Um, a business called Sunchips in the US released an environmentally friendly crisp packaging and it was dropped just 18 months after it was released because their sales dropped 11% because the crisp packaging was found too noisy and sales fell. So that was an ineffective use of CSR. But here this highlights that being successful can sometimes allow you to be ethical because of the cost of it. But Lush is an example of being ethical which has created business success. Ollie's just going to talk to you now about Lush. Uh, Lush Retail is a cosmetics company headquartered in the United Kingdom. Uh, from, the, well, from the very beginning, Lush's campaigns were somewhat different from those that have been seen uh, in organisations before. Uh, here's a short clip uh, which introduces some of uh, Lush's campaigns. <coughs> which Andrew mentioned was the non-animal testing policy. Uh, the policy broke new ground and uh, pushed attention just beyond the conventional uh, cosmetics testing through scrutinising raw material suppliers and their wider testing behaviours. Uh, the policy seemed simple and needed to reflect the clear demands of their clientele. The stakeholders of Lush all feel strongly about uh, animal testing, helping to improve their ethical stance within society and um, with their overall public acceptance. Uh, Lush has stuck to this uh, policy showing that it is possible to invent, manufacture, and <coughs> market an entire range of uh, products <coughs> meeting all the legal safety requirements without, ever, without ever having to test animals along the way. Lush has also been involved in numerous charity support campaigns. Uh, their main campaign, however, is the charity pot. A large proportion of these profits are uh, distributed to uh, grassroots campaigns. In 2013, Lush's campaigns uh, in the UK raised uh, uh, 592,000 for um, vital grassroots charities and by, by the humble charity pot. Another attribute in which Lush has gained uh, reputable corporate culture is the notion of creative buying. Often this involves uh, a great deal of innovative thinking and finding solutions to problems such as removing palm oil from uh, their products. Uh, Lush is also teaming up with Greenpeace, who are campaigning against Sinamas, uh, which is one of the world's largest pulp paper and um, plantation companies. Global demand for cheap oils, a main ingredient in most cosmetics products, such as soap, is driving deforestation in countries like Indonesia, um, pushing certain species to the brink of extinction. Um, with an escalating problem at hand, and the demand for palm oil rising, Lush decided to employ uh, a range of proactive business responses which removed palm oil from their product mix. Uh, now, I'm going to talk to you about Wonga. Wonga is a digital finance company based in London. Uh, the company's mission is to provide small loans to, uh, to offer solutions to occasional short-term cash flow needs. Wonga has become one of the biggest entities within its uh, sector, but despite its success, Many have uh, accused the company, including politicians, the media, and even the Church of England, as preying on some of the, co uh, the country's most financially vulnerable citizens through short-term high-interest loans. Wonga has come under fire 
uh, from what amounts to an APR of 5,853% on its customer loans and has been subject to uh, timeless scrutiny and, its, and um, speculation about its automated risk technology. Uh, Gail Van Oxlade, financial writer uh, and host of the TV show Till Debt Do Us Part, suggests individuals will sometimes choose to borrow when uh, even doing so makes them worse off. Consumers will borrow under the assumption that they will repay the loan within the period set, but some individuals cannot commit to this plan, uh, resulting in consumers borrowing, uh, borrowing and paying interest over many periods, trapping them in an endless cycle of indebtedness. Payday loan companies have come under fire when a fees called for the loan uh, adverts on children's television. Regulator Ofcom showed that the average child 4 to 15 saw 70 uh, payday loan adverts last year. I feel this advertising towards this segment and those who are out of work uh, is highly immoral and reinforces this lack of responsibility within the industry. The company uh, currently has aggressive pla uh, expansion plans. It has already established operations within Canada and South Africa, but some have argued uh, that the development within South Africa will easily exploit uh, lower income groups uh, who are financially illiterate or unaware of the extortionate interest rates that a company Wonga's loans. There is a sense of moral uh, responsibility unaccounted for uh, by Wonga uh, as a result of targeting this specified market segment. Here's a short clip of an individual who became into the so-called trap of there are remarkable fears that govern how payday lenders operate. They can charge any rate of interest they like. But they do have to make sure anyone who borrows money from them can realistically afford to pay it back. We have evidence some of them don't know whether or not their customers can afford the loans they're taking out. Andy's worked his way through dozens of payday loans. When he couldn't pay back one, he just Okay, so we just want to ask you now, because um, you may have some of your own knowledge about Wonga, about Lush, and what you've heard today, we just want to know, by show of hands, um, which of the more companies you think is going to be more successful. So just out of interest, how many people here think Wonga is going to be more successful in the future? Okay, and how about Lush? It's interesting. Okay, um, I'm going to pass on to Ollie and Chris, who are going to give their views. Um, Wongo's had a 67% rise from 2011 to 2012 in group revenue. They have achieved a net profit after tax of £62.5 million in 2012. Furthermore, there has been a fourfold increase in payday lenders' turnover from 2009 to 2012. There are a number of reasons for this profit and turnover achievement. One of them being that Wongo has a very high net promoter score. This score measures the likelihood that a customer will recommend or reuse his financial service. <coughs> Their scores in this have remained far ahead of any normal UK retail bank. And one possible reason for this is that Wonga offer a service that many of the UK funders command. In fact, according to an R3 survey, approximately 17% of young people are considering taking out payday loan. This shows that there is a significant number of people who are in demand for payday loans. <coughs> and Wonga fulfills this need quickly with a fully automated credit lending process. There is little doubt that, at least in the near future, this demand will remain approximately remain at this figure or increase. This is due to the fact that the UK's economy is stagnating and is not showing any significant signs of recovery for the demographic base likely to gravitate towards payday loans. Whilst many payday loan customers do not incur major fees and can pay it back reasonably easily, there are a significant minority who incur significant interest in charges and this can make up to over 19% of payday lenders' revenue. This implies that there is an underclass of user of payday loans. Any upturn in the economy in the modern age would probably benefit the middle classes rather than this underclass, and therefore Wonga will continue to make significant profits from these people. Furthermore, 15% of Wonga's customers took out more than five loans in the year, which accounted for 36% of revenue. It is clear that there is profit here in much of its own customers. 
The CEO of Walmart actually suggested that Walmart's success is due to a gen generational shift in how younger people obtain short-term credit. Evidence for this comes from the fact that 66.6% of Walmart's customers are under the age of 34, along with the fact that 100%, according to Walmart's own statistics, of their customers are smartphone users. This could be because Walmart is cheaper than unplanned overdraft charge, and therefore it's preference for going over your overdraft. It has been suggested that the shift has been caused by rising student debt. There is no move to change policy here, and therefore we can assume that these customers will continue to use Walmart. Whilst it is true that it's widely made relation on short-term loan lenders, which will most definitely lead to trouble for many short-term lenders, I do not believe that Walmart will suffer a significant number of problems due to the fact that they have made steps to diversify their business into more sectors than just payday loans in the UK. For example, Walmart opened a new product line called Walmart for Business, which provided £500,000 in business funding every month for 12 months. Um, whilst this was eventually closed by Walmart, it does show that there is a degree of innovation and willingness to think outside the box in Walmart. This is a great asset to any company. A more successful venture by Wonga has been to diversify themselves into five different countries Spain, the UK, South Africa, Poland, and Canada. This has largely been a success. In South Africa, for example, the loan to Arsenal has grown several fold between 2012 and 2013. This has meant that whilst it may be true that Wonga's paid in loans well eventually fell in the UK, they would be able to pick up uh, market, to market share and market volume in other countries. Wonga is also currently operating in a market that is dominated by three companies, of which Wonga is one of them. These companies hold 55% of the paid energy market make up in terms of customers. This means that Wonka has great, great power over market conditions and they can force other companies to follow behind them. Our members of the form will discuss the other. Oh, sorry. Our members of Oli will discuss Bosch. Uh, 21st century uh, society and business culture have continually, continually placed considerable emphasis on our ethical corporate culture and corporate social responsibility. CSR is a somewhat social trend uh, which has prevailed through a global context. Uh, we are currently witnessing an unprecedented movement in which large corporate corporations abide by and ensure uh, ethical conduct is met, sometimes even integrating CSR into uh, mission statements and marketing strategies. Uh, Lush embodies the very essence of uh, ethical uh, conduct, and so if the social trend that CSR persists in the future, it is unquestionable that Lush will prevail for time to come. At the same time, the environment in which corporations operate is not only increasingly uh, competitive, but highly demanding. These demands have to be met. Uh, they have to be met as an ordinary part of business, as Boatwright says. Here, demands signify the general consensus within a society for firms to become more proactive to environmental and social externalities. There is also a growing case for uh, um, ethical consumerism. Recent data published by the Cooperative Bank identifies that ethical products such as, uh, such as that of Lushes see a reduction in demand during tough economic climate. Since uh, economic growth within the UK is forecasted to be positive in, I think, maybe two, two or three years, um, that this could signify an increase in demand for Lushes products. Uh, moreover, increased ethical awareness among young employees may mean that um, the organisations which are associated with negative ethical reputations may fail to recruit the best minds. This could potentially imply that Lush might benefit from a constant stream of highly qualified and motivated employee base, helping to ensure the organization will succeed in future years to come. And we'll pass on to Juan. Um, we know that Lush is doing quite well in their CSR policies, which helps improve their profitability and value. So what lesson can we learn from the experience of Lush? I've summarized these six points. Uh, let's look at it again. Um, firstly, by doing CSR, a company can satisfy and motivate employees. Employees want to feel proud of the organization they work for. As a result, Lush makes fit stickers for each staff in their organization. That may give them a sense of belonging to the organization, to the company. When they feel fairly relaxed and joyful with the work, the efficiency will be increased. Um, an employee with a positive attitude towards the company is less likely to look for a job elsewhere and it is also likely that the company will receive more job applications because people want to work for you. And secondly, um, doing CSR also satisfies customers. If customer likes the company, they will buy more products and services and they will be less willing to change to another brand. Um, for example, Lush is doing quite well in providing good natural products and they have a customer article page in their official website. 
um, which allow customers to write whatever good or bad re uh, reviews on it, thus they can maintain safe improvement. And thirdly, large is a professor in protecting the environment. They have launched non-animal um, testing campaign. They committed to buy energy only from the green suppliers, and they report environmental performance in a yearly basis. In addition, for the transport they to take, they tax themselves for uh, 50 pounds uh, per metric ton of carbon dioxide, um, and they use the money to fund transport and climate change groups, um, as well as internal and external low carbon projects. Um, in today's world, people they have uh, an increasing environment, uh, increasing strong awareness of the environment. It means the more the, em uh, the company lays emphasis on CSR, the more publicity they will gain. Uh, moreover, CSR provides the opportunity to share positive stories online and from the traditional media. So, uh, in another word, they generate free publicity uh, and benefit from word of mouth marketing. Um, and next, I'll ask a question: uh, How many of you think CSR is such a money cost? take Lush as an example. Um, they have implemented energy saving programs such as making energy more efficient. They get staff to switch off. Um, they replacing less efficient equipment and so on. That saves them lots of money on the electricity. Um, it is also worth noting that the way they cut down the expense of water and packaging is to make the products solid. Um, that saves an incredible amount of water, about 450,000 um, liters a year from selling shampoo bars globally. Um, besides, as I mentioned before, uh, companies no longer have to waste money on such expensive advertising campaigns. Um, furthermore, they have less spending on staff recruitment and retention. My fifth point is, a CSR program requires an open, outside, oriented approach. The business must be in a constant dialogue with customers, suppliers, and other parties affect the organization. So because of the continued interactions with these parties, so the company will be the first to know about new business opportunities. Uh, and finally, from Lush's development, I can conclude that um, CSR is not something for the short term. It's all about achieving long-term results and the business continuity. And next, I will pass it to my partner, Kuroda. She'll talk about something about longer and the disadvantage of not doing CSR? Well, by not doing CSR, will may cause some other effects. First of all, being a negative public reputation. As we mentioned earlier, Lush do the non-animal testing campaign, charity support, and reduce ways to win their positive reputation. However, as for Wonga, they start talking about money, which lets some consumers feel that Wonga put interest behind nothing. The next one is reduce the cost. Unlike saving money by doing CSR, not doing it can save